Welcome traders to this week's live trade analysis session with me, Patrick Munley. If you can hear me and you can see the welcome screen, if you type a Y in the chat box so that I know uh, we are good to, uh, to get started here. A Y in the chat box if you can hear me and you can see the welcome screen, please. Okay. So, before we get started with this week's analysis, as always, it's important that we adhere to the risk disclaimer. Um, the, the views specifically expressed by me here today are solely mine. They're not indicative of or representative of those held by Tickmill Europe or Tickmill UK Limited. Um, for those that are here for the first time, a, a brief introduction to myself. As I say, my name is Patrick Nunley, and after I graduated from King's College London, I joined the City PLC consulting firm. I left with some colleagues and went on to successfully co-found and exit a consulting startup focused on C-suite executive search for technology businesses, having a front row seat to the dot-com bubble, witnessing people make and lose a fortune in the market, sometimes quite literally overnight. I decided to explore my curiosity for markets. With some capital to play with and some time on my hands, I started day trading the S&P 500, or probably more appropriately, day gambling. After some early beginner's luck, I racked up some pretty solid gains. However, as is often the case, my beginner's luck ran out, and as the market phase changed, I began to average down into losing positions, giving back all my gains, and ultimately experiencing a significant six-figure financial hit. To say this was a gut-wrenching and sobering experience is an understatement. I really had to stand back and figure out if it was feasible for me to make a leap from the markets. So I decided to get serious about trading and sought out a mentor with an excellent trading track record. Working with my mentor for a period of 18 months to two years, it was a time during which I upped not just my technical game in terms of researching, developing, and extensively back and forward testing strategies that crucially suited my personality, all of which were underpinned by a rigorous risk management approach. But most importantly, during the period of mentorship, I significantly developed my mental game. And probably most importantly, I made the watershed shift from being a highly goal-orientated individual focused on financial gains to becoming purely process-orientated. So what does that actually mean? Well, it means I had to stop focusing on what I could make from the markets and start focusing solely on managing my mindset to allow me to consistently execute my trading strategy uh, oftentimes in the face of negative feedback from the markets in the form of losing trades. But once you become process orientated and you have a professional trading mindset and you understand the true nature of trading being a numbers game in which you are simply playing the probabilities, uh, you lose the emotional investment and that hellish emotional roller coaster of living and dying by the outcomes of individual trades. I'm no longer concerned with the outcome of individual trades or even a string of trades. My focus is on the next 100 trades because I know that if I focus on excellence in execution, uh, my edge will demonstrate itself over an extended series of outcomes. My multi-strategy approach has delivered uh, profitable annual returns since 2008. Uh, from 2013, I've also been managing investor capital uh, through a managed account service delivering annual positive returns. I'm currently responsible for managing a multi-million dollar portfolio. Uh, since 2010, I've also mentored hundreds of private traders of all experience levels, from complete novices to former CME floor traders, in developing the technical and mental skills to reap consistent returns from the markets. In addition to my uh, fund management, I'm also engaged in other market oriented projects. I'm a resident market expert, exclusively providing market and trade analysis to Tickmill, providing an in-depth daily market outlook and breaking down fundamental and technical drivers for the day ahead. I also provide daily technical uh, trade setups for two to three markets per day. I also run Tickmill's rapidly growing e-mini strategy group, where I provide uh, daily a specific trade plan with intraday trade updates and since its inception, I've delivered over uh, 1,070 points of upside. Uh, you can request free access to the uh, Tickmill Strategy Group. I'll leave the link there in the chat for you all. I strongly suggest you, uh, you take that up if you're interested in trading the S&P 500 or the E-mini 
S&P or e-micro contracts. Okay, so let's jump into the charts. We're going to start this week with the dollar index. Obviously, we had the FOMC out last night, and uh, we got a slightly hawkish lean um, to the FOMC, uh, giving indication that tapering uh, is on the table now, firmly on the table. And uh, as is often the case, once, uh, once the market delivers that anticipated outcome, it's a question of buy the rumor and sell the facts. So uh, we got a, a pop in the dollar last night, but we're seeing some supply come in here today. I'd be looking for any pullbacks now into the uh, projected ascending trend line support, weekly range support at the 92.60 area. Uh, watching for bullish reversal patterns there as we eventually target this long-awaited uh, 93.90 upside objective here. And from there, I'll be keenly watching for bearish reversal patterns as we potentially put in a, a major wave four high there. And, uh, and then we could be looking at the next leg of downside in terms of the dollar index as, the, uh, as was the case with the uh, prior tapering that we've seen. Um, we saw an, that initial pop, but then ultimately we saw the dollar uh, sell off. So I'm, uh, I'm watching for this uh, grind higher into this supply zone, which are bearish reversal patterns to engage on the short side. Now, obviously, uh, that dollar view feeds uh, directly into the euro dollar, which basically trades as, almost as an inverse to dollar index. And so what we're looking for with the euro dollar now is... Um, to find some support here at the monthly range support at the uh, 117.16. We're seeing some, some decent demand come into the market today. I'll be looking for a pop higher now into uh, the weekly range resistance just ahead of 118. And then from there, we'll see if sellers step back in to take this down to the uh, big equality objective that we have been tracking here. I'll just draw that in for you so you can see exactly what I'm talking about. So we have this A leg, our B leg high, and then we're looking for our C leg to complete into this 116.30. And then from there, we could see a more meaningful upside move in, uh, in the Euro, where we can think about challenging that 120 again on the upside. And then from there, we can have a potential meaningful low in place. And uh, we could be thinking about a new leg of upside in the, uh, in the Euro dollar. So those are the two uh, major FX updates there. Let's just now work through these charts. Start with the S&P 500. Obviously, we've seen a bit of a sell-off in terms of the S&P. I'm watching now this trend line resistance, which comes in here uh, at the, let's see, 4460 area. And then I'm looking for, ideally, another leg of downside. And as always, what we're looking for is that equality objective. So. If we find um, some supply here into that trend line, then we look for another leg of downside to complete then uh, a major wave four low. And then we will be targeting a wave five move uh, to the upside. So ideally what we get is, a, um, is an opportunity to uh, see weakness now into October. And then we should see that, that set up uh, for what's often referred to as the, the Santa Claus rally, et cetera. But ultimately what we'd be looking for then would be a nice pop into year end uh, as portfolio managers uh, window dress and, uh, and take advantage of, uh, of the, that natural lift that we often see into November, December and January. So paying close attention to how we trade into this trend line resistance, bearish reversal patterns there, Another opportunity on the short side, but ultimately we will be looking for a way for low to uh, to develop, and then we will be looking to get in on the long side. Similar story in the Nasdaq. Uh, we have this trend line resistance. We have a pivot cluster here. We tested it just uh, today from uh, from below, and we seem to be finding a little bit of supply coming in here. So what we we're looking for now. Let's uh, let's remove that. Thing. Bring in this here. So we have um, correction into the trend line in this pivot cluster. And then we'll be looking for that C wave extension. Let's just get a good measure on it there. So a quality objective. So as we hold resistance in and around um, this. 15,250 up to 15,400 there, watching for bearish reversal patterns to engage on the short side. And we'll be looking for a retest here of support down to 14,000. 
475. And then a similar story, obviously, to, uh, to with the S&P, we'll be looking for that wave four low to be in place. And ultimately, then an extension to the upside into year end is the uh, is the game plan there. But similar setup in the Dow here, obviously, looking for another leg of downside. Uh, prefer to trade the S&P myself. DAX. Coming up into its trend line resistance. Let's just draw that in. Uh, the DAX is a little bit stronger than the other markets at the moment. There has been a bit of a bid into European equities, but ultimately we look for this trend line to hold and uh, another leg of downside to, to set up. And then we'd be looking on the long side in terms of the DAX. Uh, so somewhere around this 14,550 area to complete this move. Let's make sure we've got the equality right there. So if this is going to be an equal legs, uh, we won't actually see it as low. So let's just update this. You can see we've got this support zone here. Let's draw that in. So we've got it. So ultimately what we're going to be looking for is a test here of this support zone in the DAX. So that gives us 14,700, just above 14,700. And then from there, we'll be looking for that fifth wave extension to the upside into, uh, into the year end. So it's going to be key how we trade here at this 15,760, because we could, this, this correction technically could be complete here. Um, and the first tell for that will be a move. Uh, that takes out the trend line and a close above 15,800. If we see that, then technically uh, we could have our wave for low in place and uh, we could see some European outperformance in terms of the equity indexes. But for now, we're going to pay close attention to how we respond at this trend line and that monthly pivot there, 15,790, uh, to see if we get another leg to the downside for extending higher into year end. Nikkei obviously been a bit of an outperformer, but should pay attention here, potential meaningful double top in place. The only thing that uh, leads me to believe we probably aren't going to see a double top is the fact that we didn't get any meaningful uh, divergence in terms of our momentum studies. If anything, uh, we broke out to the upside there. You can see uh, that higher high in terms of the momentum study. And that's the first uh, piece of market intelligence you want to take away there and thinking, uh, have we seen that uh, a double top in place? It's what we prefer to see would be really off the charts uh, divergent. So something like this, if this uh, if this pattern had occurred um, over there, then that would be more of an indication that we potentially have a high in place. So for now, what I'd be expecting is a three wave corrected move back into uh, this 28,850 zone. And then we should extend higher once again in terms of the Nikkei. So those are the equity indexes. So the story is that obviously we're in correction territory at the moment. Uh, we potentially have another leg of downside to, uh, to play out. Uh, the DAX really want to keep a close eye on because that's the one that could lead us uh, or be the canary in the coal mine in terms of suggesting that the correction is actually complete. But for now, it's paying attention to how price responds at these trend line resistance tests because that could set up the next leg of downside uh, in these markets before setting up that uh, year-end rally. Um, we've covered the dollar index. Let's take a look at gold. Gold has held the support zone that we looked at last week quite nicely. So we now look for gold to extend up into uh, this trend line resistance. So where's the opportunity in terms of the long side here? Well, we'd want to see this trend line get taken out now. So let's draw this in here. Gold can get up through uh, weekly range resistance and the trend line 1790, 1795. A close in that zone would set up a move to test this 1850. And that's going to be a key test for the market because if we hold there and bearish reversal patterns uh, develop, then we have a downside objective at 1520, which is this big quality move versus this swing structure here as uh, a big abc corrected move however if we do get a close through the 1850 again that would be the first sign that maybe this correction is complete now in gold and then we can start thinking about new upside targets silver traded into our target zone we found 
uh, sort of demand coming to the market here. Uh, could now, if we can get the key for silver, really is going to be breaking uh, this trend channel that it's currently in. So it's got a bit of work to do. I mean, I, I wouldn't be looking on the long side until we're back through $24, $24.15 on silver. And if we can get through there, um, then we set up a test or a potential test of range resistance back up to $28, $29. Uh, but nothing immediate to do with silver. Crude oil has retested this trend line from above. Potential now that we do a double here. So an ABC correction that would bring us back into this pivotal 68.70. And once we get in there, I'd be watching for bullish reversal patterns because we have a nice bullish sequence here. One, two, this three, four subdivided nicely into an ABC equality. So now looking for any pullbacks to hold the uh, 68, $69 level. Bullish reversal patterns there are an opportunity on the long side to trade for this 80, $81 fifth wave upside objective that, uh, that we've been tracking there in, in crude oil. So that's one that's certainly on the radar. Copper held the trend line resistance as we anticipate, and we now have a three-wave corrective move developing. So whilst we hold resistance here at the 427.63 zone, uh, what we're looking for is another leg of downside to get into this equality objective at the 385.50. Uh, bullish reversal patterns there will be an opportunity on the long side in copper. And we ideally what we'd be looking for with that copper low to kind of coincide with these equity markets pulling back. Uh, often copper is a, an indication of buoyant markets and uh, an economic expansion. So we'll see if copper gets in here and, uh, and we get the hold. And that again, we'll, we'll be looking for that to sync up with the, uh, with the opportunity in terms of these equity markets and risk appetite in general. Bitcoin pulled back into our support zone that we looked at last week. And again, with Bitcoin here, the, um, the opportunity now will be on the long side once we get a break of this trend line resistance. And, uh, and if that plays out, then as we discussed last week, we look for moves through the 53,000 up into prior highs, 65,000. And then ultimately we're looking for this major upside objective at the 76,000 level. And again, um, Bitcoin and some of these, uh, these stable coins are starting to trade kind of as risk barometers themselves. So we've seen the pullback in Bitcoin, the pullback in equity markets. Still think we've got another leg to go in terms of the equity markets. And if that's the case, what we'd be looking for uh, with Bitcoin here is if we can't break this trend line resistance. So let me just draw this in for you and I'll, you'll see what I'm thinking about. Uh, if we get up in here and we fail to take out this trend line resistance, then that sets up the move, another leg to the downside, to ultimately test this major trend line support, which comes in at the 34,000 level. Um, and that would still, as long as if we hold there, then this, this bullish thesis to the upside into that 76, still in play, very much in play. Um, but that, that corrected leg lower will coincide with the equity markets, obviously taking another uh, another leg lower before we get that uh, that advance. Ether, similar story, has traded uh, into the support zone, found some nice demand there from the pitchfork projection that we had last week. So again, with this, if we're looking to get in on the long side, we want some confirmation first. And, uh, and what we'd like to see would be a break of trend line resistance here because there is always the chance that we do a, no, a double correction in terms of uh, in terms of ether, and that would have uh, another leg to the downside. So we want to see this trend line taken out, 33, 98, 34 level, and then we can start to think about new upside objectives. Dollar yuan, this is a trade I had on last week, and uh, got some took some nice profits in this, at, uh, plus 230. Uh, what we're looking for now is another pullback here, test the support zone again before we try to get a test of the trend, projected trend line resistance. So watching for the pullback. Again, though, if the dollar index falls, uh, fails its support zone, then uh, this could set up a, another leg lower in the dollar yuan. But for now, uh, we'll watch to see how we trade back at support for another leg to the upside. Dollar yen, had this one on last week, uh, long, uh, got 50 or 60 pips to the upside. But uh, now what we look for is a break of trend line resistance. Let's draw this in here. 
as confirmation that we could see another leg higher in terms of the dollar yen. So if we can get a close back through 110.15, that would set up, uh, to my mind anyway, opportunities on the intraday charts to uh, look for long positions, ultimately looking for a target up into the one uh, to the projected ascending trend line resistance somewhere up in 112.50 in terms of dollar yen. So we see uh, pulling back to test trend line, the broken trend line resistance as support. No clear trading opportunity for me there at the moment in terms of the Swiss. See, similar story in the cab. Dollar, Sing Dollar, I had this one on as well, took 70 pips out of this. Uh, we're seeing a pullback now. So the story here with the uh, Singapore dollar is we could get back down into this trend line support and see if the buyers step in there again, and then we could be thinking about uh, a move into this trend line resistance. The alternative scenario, one that um, can always play out, is that we get a double correction now. And so we could be thinking, uh, something like this back into the range support zone down here uh, before trying to uh, trying to mount another leg to the upside. Uh, so pay close attention to how we trade back at this uh, projected pitchfork support zone. Um, could be an, another opportunity to re-engage uh, dollar uh, sing dollar on the long side. Euro testing its support here. Uh, as to, I, I, we've got, actually we've already covered the euro chart, pardon me. Euro yen, this one has held the support zone double bottom. This was a, a chart I posted um, on the chart, it uh, played out quite nicely. So what we're watching for now with the euro yen is again thinking uh, in terms of confirmations that we have a meaningful low in place. What we will want to see is a close back through uh, this pivot cluster and weekly range resistance. So. 129.30, 129.50. If we can get a close through there, um, then we can start to think about uh, long positions in terms of the euro yen. And uh, the immediate resistance comes in range resistance, monthly projected range resistance at 130.70. But we need to get to see a close back through 129.50 to, uh, to look at that intraday. Euro sterling, still looking for that last push to the downside here before we could have that meaningful low in place uh, back into the trend uh, back into trend line resistance zone here so again with this euro sterling what you look for is a break of this trend line support to suggest that uh, we have that high in place to extend then for our fifth wave low uh, down into this 8360 zone Euro Aussie. <clears throat> and I'll be looking uh, short positions in the Euro Aussie now on a close uh, as long as we close red today uh, in terms of the candle. Uh, my uh, uh, volume weighted average price running on these charts. So the candle colors are slightly different to normal candles. But if we get a close at or below current levels, then I see an opportunity on the short side Euro Aussie to play for test of this uh, 159. Uh, 58 area and then I'll be paying close attention to see if we can get bullish reversal patterns as an opportunity to re-engage them on the long side. Uh, nothing in the Euro key we might have an opportunity here as well. We've traded back into this uh, prior trend line support and seeing some decent selling coming in here. We have a potential bear, uh, bear flag scenario. So if we can get a close uh, through, let's just draw this in. So here's our, our bear flag. We can get a close back through uh, these lows here or a break of these lows. And I think that sets up an immediate test. Let's draw that in for you. So this is our bear flag here. Seeing a nice three wave move there. So it sets up an immediate test then of um, support back down to 163 monthly range support 162.70. So look for a break of that uh, trend line support there 165.50 for that uh, decent 200 pip move down there to test uh, that pivotal support zone. So I'm going to keep an eye on that one. Let's just mark that up as, uh, as a potential opportunity. Sterling seeing a nice bounce today from its uh, its support zone here. So. Again, can we take out the trend line 
looks like we might be able to. If so, then we look for a move back into this 137.70. Key decision points, again, for Sterling, uh, as we could then get another leg lower to test this weekly and monthly range support zone. Sterling Yen has <coughs> nice bounce from the big trend line support here. So there could be an opportunity developing on the long side in Sterling Yen. If, uh, if we can get back up through this pivot cluster, take out the trend line resistance, above us and uh, then we'd have a triangle completing here and we could be thinking about extending back up to retest uh, price cycle highs so sterling yen is certainly one that's on the board at the moment but also like sterling aussie is looking for a close through we haven't haven't got that move through the 80 uh, 187 handle as an opportunity to see another leg to the downside uh, keeping an eye on the sterling aussie but further playing the sterling yen really, or even sterling at this point. Aussie seeing a decent bounce attempt here. So you can see I've drawn this in basically as a trend line. So we're using this. So if we can get a close through the uh, 73 handle in the Aussie, then I'm looking for a move up to test 74. And then we could develop a potential inverse head and shoulder scenario. But key to see if we can get that close through the 73, we're sitting on momentum support down here, the trend channel. So I'm paying very close attention to the Aussie like that, potentially on the long side. Aussie Yen, similar story, breaking or making an attempt here to break its trend line resistance. Let me just draw that in for you. So there's the trend line. So if we can get a close through this weekly pivot here, 80.24, I'd be looking then for a test of the 82.40 trend line resistance zone in terms of the Aussie. Aussie CAD, it's another one I like, has traded right into that support zone now. So I'm watching this Aussie CAD cl closely on closes here, daily closes. So if we can get a close now uh, back through uh, these prior highs here, 92.50, then that sets up a great opportunity on the long side to play for this equality objective up into the 94.80 level. So that's one that is on the radar uh, in the next couple of uh, evenings at the close. Aussie Kiwi, still tracking this one as well, looking for a break of the a close through this trend line resistance to get in on the long side, bunch of confluence there, and that could give us a nice uh, ride up into test uh, this trend line resistance here coming in at the 106 handle. So paying close attention to that Aussie Kiwi. Kiwi dollar, this is an opportunity on the long side into the close tonight. If we close at or above current levels, I'll be looking to get long and I'll be targeting an equality objective back into range resistance there, 73, 20. Uh, last but not least, let's take a look at the CAD yen. CAD yen, I'm looking for a break of this descending trend line resistance. Uh, coming in now, let's see if we can get a close through 87, 20, then we could have a wave four low in place and start to think about wave five, a minimum upside objective there of the 93 handle. Uh, so that's, uh, those are the charts that I'm tracking at the moment, looking ultimately for another potential leg of downside in the equity markets to play into an ideal October uh, or October low, and, uh, and that should feed then into risk assets and, uh, and the dollar view, et cetera. So uh, lots of opportunity developing here as we head into the back end of the month. And, uh, and we'll see what, uh, what shapes up. So if you have any questions or there's a chart you'd like me to take a look at that I haven't covered, uh, type that into the chat box and uh, we will cover those off. Equally, if you don't have any questions, uh, please type an N in the chat box so that I know we're all on the same page and ready to, uh, to wrap this up. And I strongly suggest all of you take advantage of the opportunity to uh, join me in the Tickmill E-mini S&P chart. Uh, Chris, uh, German, um, uh, so the DAX on the 30-minute chart. The lowest I go to, Chris, is the hourly chart. Well, let's pull up the DAX and see what's what. So this, uh, this move's looking impulsive at the moment. Um, like I said, uh, let's just see if we can get this data. So what I'd be paying attention to here is this trend line. 
So as I kind of said on the daily chart, this you know this move at the moment has impulsive qualities. What one of the key th one of the key things I look for um, is the when we when we look at these impulsive advances. What I would like to see is that we just take out uh, this these prior highs here, this fifteen seventy nine. So if we do something like this, Chris, here we go. So let's say we pull back here, maybe we do a double, um, as long as we don't see. So what I'd ideally like to see would be, um, we just clip those prior highs there. Let me, I'll actually, let's measure this from there. So we'll say that. So if we can just take out these prior highs, then what I would look for would be this type of scenario. A move then that sees a bigger correction into, let's say here, and then that would be, to my mind anyway, <coughs> to my mind, the way I trade these markets, that would be the opportunity then to get in on the long side. At the moment, this looks impulsive, but it hasn't quite done enough for me at this stage anyway, to warrant buying a pullback yet. Really wanna see these prior peaks just taken out, even just by a tick there, um, to, uh, to look then for an opportunity for a three wave corrective move, potential inverse head and shoulders scenario here as, uh, as an opportunity on the long side. Does that make sense, Chris? Uh, I don't know what an S90 crossover is. No problem at all, Chris, you're very welcome. Okay, any other questions? Okay, I am, uh, I'm going to take that as a no. And so I'll wrap this session up here. Uh, please feel free to join me in the Tickmill uh, Futures Group. And, uh, and if not, I will, uh, I'll see you all next week, same time, same place. Thanks very much and I hope this helps.